Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This week, Lexus sent me the IS500 Performance Sedan powered by the glorious five liter naturally aspirated V8 engine. Actually the same one out of the LC500 Coupe and convertible, which I did review here on the channel just a few months ago. But outside of that, the IS500 actually doesn't have too many performance enhancements versus the regular IS, which it is based upon outside of a few suspension tweaks and of course that five liter naturally aspirated V8. So as usual, let's go over my likes and dislikes here with the IS500 and see why you may want to keep it on your shopping list even though it is based upon an older generation of vehicle. So my first like here with the IS500 has to do with what's under the hood and that is that five liter naturally aspirated V8 pushing out 472 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque only through the rear wheels and a torsion limited slip differential. And with this engine under the hood and the relatively lightweight nature of a compact sports sedan like this, it allows it to do zero to 60 in the mid four second range, which is quite potent for a vehicle like this, even though some of the competition with the turbocharged four and six cylinders can eke out the same amount of time. But this is the exact reason as to why you may want to purchase this vehicle. Now the 5 liter V8 provides a glorious characteristic that you really don't see with too many new vehicles on the market, from the sound to the way it drives and the power delivery, etc. the list goes on. Now this was something that you actually did see in a compact or mid-sized performance sedan about 10 to 15 years ago, at least it was more common in that regard. But nowadays with people moving to the twin turbo V6 or even four bangers, uh, the V8 certainly is a standout feature of the IS500. It is the reason why I really, really have enjoyed driving this vehicle around. Although I do think there is a few tweaks they could make to make it even a little bit better in its current iteration. Uh, but overall, I am glad that Lexus offers the V8 engine here in the IS. Now my second like here with the IS500 has to do with the overall styling and exterior appearance. Now this vehicle, the IS is fairly old in its current generation. I don't know the exact year when it came out, but it did go through a major refresh on the exterior as well as the inside, I would say about two to four years ago. And that really gave it a new design and kind of a breath of fresh air, uh, because again, it is based on a fairly old platform. I think even with that said, the IS is still a very attractive compact sport sedan, whether you get it in the IS350 F Sport or the Top Dog IS500 as seen here. The designs are very fresh. It has a lot of nice aggressive sharp angles, especially here at the front end with the entire gloss black front fascia. Out back, the IS500, like I said, gets the staggered exhaust tips, which is one of the key differentiating factors versus the 350 and some of the lesser trims. Now this color actually throws me for a loop. I really, really do like it here in the direct sunlight. There's a lot of metallic flake on the paint, but it is a certain shade of blue, which is just kind of hard to distinguish. And I've asked several other people what they think of this color as well. And we all kind of have the same uh, judgment is it looks very nice here in direct sunlight when you can see all the metallics. But when it comes to, you know, dawn, dusk, or just overcast skies, it is just a weird shade of blue. So I um, really can't complain because that is a subjective matter, uh, but I really do like the overall design language here on the current IS. Now my next like with this vehicle has to do with the seats and the seating materials. Now all the Lexuses I featured here on the channel have a very similar material which is very high quality, very soft to the touch, and very plush. But the IS500 just has the seats that I've liked the most, believe it or not. They are shaped extremely nicely. Um, if you're a little bit on the larger side, they may be a little tight, but they are perfectly bolstered. The size bolsters fit the vehicle personality quite well. The bottom bolsters do as well with not coming up too high on your thighs, but certainly being able to hold you in uh, through those corners here that you're taking at a little bit higher speed uh, given the extra performance of this vehicle. But it's really just a very well contoured seat, fits many body types very well, and the materials in here in this color combination is certainly like it or hate it. It's just really not something you can argue with. So my fourth like with the IS500 has to do with the stereo and sound system. Now this vehicle comes standard with the 17 speaker Mark Levinson audio system, uh, which is powered by 1800 watts and again, 17 different channels. And this is actually a 7.1 certified surround sound system. So depending on the audio files that you're playing and the actual you know source that it's coming from, this vehicle can actually have a 7.1 uh, surround sound system here on the inside and given the overall cabin space it is quite small and it gets quite loud 
and it really has some very good high quality audio system. Now my fifth like here on the interior has to do with some of the redundant and physical controls here on the interior. Now this is somewhat due to the age of the current generation of vehicle. So this does look a little bit dated in terms of especially Lexus interiors, but just all vehicles in general. It's something that has been around for quite some time and it's certainly a drawback to some people, but it is also a little bit refreshing to see uh, because again, many manufacturers have started going to new infotainment systems um, or all touch sensitive controls, even on the steering wheel and some of the climate and radio settings. But the one thing I do like about the IS interior specifically is it does have some redundancy. So for example, if you wanna use the infotainment system, it's not only a touch screen, so you can touch some of the functions and navigate that way, but it also has the old school Lexus uh, touchpad, so you can scroll around the infotainment and use some of the shortcut buttons in this area, uh, which some people I've talked to say they can easily get used to it, but personally, not a big fan of that touchpad, but you do have the touchscreen, uh, which is very nice. And in terms of other redundancies, you have three different ways to skip tracks or control the audio and media that you're listening to. So here on the steering wheel, these arrows are the ones that let you skip and reverse tracks for the source that you're listening to. You also have the media controls down here next to the built-in CD player. I know, very strange to see, but this vehicle does still have a built-in CD player. So you can seek tracks right there, or you can use the actual source that you're listening to. For example, Bluetooth audio. You can skip up there on the screen, either using the touch-sensitive buttons or the controls down here for the touchpad. So those are three or four different ways you can actually skip tracks with the audio multimedia. And even though I was having some Bluetooth connectivity issues, for example, it wasn't showing any song information, artist information, or just source information. It simply says unknown. Not exactly sure what that reason is. It is one of the reasons why I like older interiors like this, because you simply don't find that in today's world. Some manufacturers are moving to simply two ways to seek tracks. Um, mainly on the steering wheel, maybe on the infotainment system, but typically it's gonna be only on the steering wheel and the touchscreen infotainment. Those are gonna be the only ways you can do it. But here inside the Lexus, there's actually several different ways to control certain functions. So just a refreshing thing to see here on older interior. So that's gonna do it for all my likes here with the IS500. Now let's move into things that I don't like so much. And many of these are due to the older generation in which this vehicle is based upon. So my first dislike has to do with the fact that there is no remote start built into the actual key fob itself. Now this is a key fob that Lexus has been using for several years now, and it's a very simplistic, very compact key fob, so I do like that about this vehicle, but there's no remote start and it's just a traditional proximity entry with your lock, unlock, uh, trunk release, as well as alarm buttons, and that is pretty much it. It would be nice to see a revised key fob as well as remote start built into the fob itself so you don't have to use the app services, uh, which may expire if you don't pay for it over time. Uh, so again, that's just a minor complaint, but it would be nice to see remote start on the key. Now my second dislike has to do with the turn signal stalks here on this vehicle. Now this is actually the first Lexus I've had this issue with, but I remember back in the day that this was kind of a common practice uh, by not only Lexus, but I believe a couple other manufacturers as well. And that is the turn signals you have to click down and it automatically springs back into the center even though the turn signal remains on. And then if you wanna cancel it, you kinda of gotta give it just a little bit lift in the opposite direction. So it does not stay held in the actual direction that you're turning, but rather it is more of an electronic uh, switch type assembly that is going to be spring loaded. And if you're not used to this, it is something you do get used to over time, but if you're not used to this jumping in this vehicle, it is a little bit weird to use for the first time. So again, I would rather have a turn signal stock that you know stays down in the direction in which you're turning until you complete the term and then springs back into the center versus the spring-loaded uh, type of turn signal, which just is a little bit harder to use. Now, my third dislike on the interior, again, has to come back to the infotainment system. And this is just, again, due to the age of the generation of vehicle, and that is just, it's a little bit on the outdated side of things. So as you can see, much like the LC that I had a few months ago, this has the older infotainment system with the touch type pad in the center. Now for 2024, the LC got the revised updated infotainment, which totally changes the overall experience in using it from day to day and gives it the entirely new UI and some of the features that uh, that infotainment does enable. But unfortunately for 2024, the IS500 carries on with this current iteration of the infotainment 
uh, which I'm sure is based on, you know, five plus years ago, uh, depending on the vehicle that you're in. Now, I know they did add the touchscreen functionality um, not terribly long ago, but it still is outdated in today's standards. You can see on the map, it's just not up to date. Um, all of these other screens are just a little bit more on the dated side, again, because it is the previous generation of stuff. And this also hinders the 360 surround view camera system as well and the resolution that it is capable of. So for example, I'll go ahead and put the vehicle in reverse. You can see the camera system does come up and it does have 360 cameras, believe it or not, but the overall angle and resolution of the backup camera or the forward camera is not great as well. It has a very fish-eyed look. It isn't too smooth. And you can see there is a little indentation. I'm not sure if that's just in the camera or something is actually blocking the camera view itself. Again, a fairly minor complaint, but given this is something you interact with and use day to day, it does hinder my overall perspective of this vehicle. So my fifth dislike here on the interior has to do with the throttle response. Oh, what a glorious sounding V8. Now, believe it or not, the throttle response in this vehicle is actually just a little bit dull or a little bit delayed. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but in anything but Sport Plus mode, I found myself wanting more sensitive throttle. So say you're driving along you know, at 20 miles an hour and you push the throttle down, it doesn't give you the same amount of oomph or acceleration that one would expect with that amount of throttle increase. Now, like I said, Sport Plus mode is fine and I believe custom mode, you can put the throttle response in the Sport Plus so you can kind of leave everything else in normal or regular sport and only customize the throttle response to Sport Plus or the most aggressive that it offers. But that's just something that I would like tweaked and should be fairly easy to do uh, via a model year change, um, is just tweak the throttle response to be a little bit more sensitive in all of the regular drive modes, including normal and sport. Obviously, Eco is gonna give you the most fuel efficient and least responsive throttle, which is fine. But I would just like to see the transmission and overall throttle response be slightly more aggressive in normal and sport modes. Now, I guess you can say this is somewhat of an honorable mention dislike, but that is the wheel and tire setup that comes here from the factory. Now, this car actually has the optional 2450 BBS forged alloy wheels kind of finished in the satin or matte black. Uh, the wheel design itself actually looks very good. I'm just personally not a fan of this color uh, satin matte black from the factory. Uh, I think it looks a little bit on the cheaper side of things, and I actually think I prefer the NK that comes standard free of charge with the IS500 over this wheel and tire setup, but it is a cool option nonetheless. And also another small complaint is the tires that these are wrapped in. These are Bridgestone Potenza S001L uh, summer performance tires. Now it's really not a bad tire. I haven't had too many overall you know, grip issues, although it has been a little bit on the chilly side of things, especially in the morning uh, where it's in the 40 degree range, which is really as cold as you wanna run a summer tire. Uh, of course they do heat up as you're driving and it, today has actually been a beautiful day in the 60s. I would like to see, you know, maybe a Michelin PS4 summer tire, uh, because that is personally what I run on my vehicle and I really haven't had any complaints with that performance tire. And I would probably save just a little bit of money on this wheel and tire setup, um, unless you really, really do like it from the factory. And obviously it is an OEM offered product, so it should be very structurally sound and forged wheels are gonna be just a hair lighter than most of the flow form cast options on the market as well. So now this is a, definitely a subjective matter, but personally I'd probably save the 2,500 bucks and stick with the standard NK wheel. So that's pretty much going to do it for all my likes and dislikes here with the 2024 Lexus IS500. Now I want to give a huge thanks to Lexus for sending this vehicle out for me to test and review. I snuck this in before the weather really started to turn here in the Midwest, again with these summer tires and the rear wheel drive architecture. Uh, certainly something that you either want to change the tires on at a minimum or stop driving this vehicle once the temperatures dip below freezing uh, because summer tires get extremely stiff and have little, little grip once those reach temperatures again uh, well below freezing. But really this is a very fantastic car. Like I said, it's very fun to drive and has a ton of power, 472 horsepower in a vehicle this small definitely makes it scoot, even though there are some weird throttle response and uh, transmission quirks uh, that the 10 speed didn't have quite as much in the LC 500. Again, make sure to check that video out if you guys are curious about it. Uh, but I really wouldn't mark this off the list if you're looking for a performance sedan, even though this vehicle doesn't have all of the raw, you know, hardcore performance aspects versus some of the competitors on the market, it still has a lot of things going for it. And it really is an homage to some of the old V8 rear wheel drive sports sedans uh, that were 
were on the market, again, 10, 15 years ago, depending on the manufacturer. So yeah, really like this car. Really glad I got the opportunity to spend about a week with it. And uh, again, you should definitely check it out if you have the opportunity. And it might be a good pickup on the used side of things, whether it's CPO or just used within you know two, three, four years after it comes out. I don't know exactly what these are actually going for on the used market, but I have to believe that they're actually gonna be reasonable deals you know, maybe 10, 15, $20,000 depreciated. If you can get this car for like 40 grand, just, you know, two or three years old, I feel like it'll be a great pickup and certainly an absolute blast to drive on a day-to-day -day basis. But that's just my unique perspective. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video once again. If you guys did, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel in these videos. Subscribe if you guys haven't already and make sure to stay tuned for my driving review of this vehicle, as well as check out other Lexus and other manufacturer content here. I uh, really do appreciate the support and a lot me to continue creating these videos for you guys. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you happen to own one of these vehicles, let me know how your ownership experience has been and any, any other likes and dislikes that you may have about the IS500. Certainly curious to hear that. Um, it really is, you know, a little bit of a smaller vehicle, so may not be good for a family setting, but if you're a couple or a single person, this may be a great option if you're willing to, you know, change the wheels and tires out seasonally uh, like I do on my personal car. But anyways, let me know your thoughts and comments down below. I appreciate the support and hope See you guys in the next one.